What drives an individual to repeatedly commit the most heinous of crimes? This is a question that has puzzled experts and laymen alike for centuries. The term serial killer may be a modern invention, but the chilling acts these individuals commit are as old as civilization itself. Let's cast our minds back to the 15th century to the tale of French nobleman Gilles de Ray. A war hero turned child murderer, de Ray's gruesome deeds would make even the hardiest among us shudder. His victims, mostly young boys, were subjected to unspeakable acts of torture and cruelty before their untimely deaths. De Reis's actions were driven by a toxic blend of power, perversion, and sadism, making him one of the earliest known serial killers. Travel a bit further east, to the dark chambers of Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Bathory's castle. Known as the Blood Countess, Bathory was infamous for her brutal treatment of young girls in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. She believed bathing in the blood of virgins would grant her eternal youth and beauty. Her horrifying crimes were eventually exposed, leading to her confinement within the walls of her own castle until her death. These early examples of serial killers may seem distant and almost unreal, yet they share common traits with their modern counterparts. Both de Reis and Bathory were motivated by perverse desires and a complete disregard for human life. They exploited their positions of power to commit their heinous crimes, often targeting the most vulnerable in society. These early cases set a dark precedent for the serial killers who would follow. The stories of Gilles de Reis and Elizabeth Bathory are a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink. Their tales are not just chapters in history books, but chilling echoes of a recurring pattern of violence and cruelty that continues to manifest in the darkest corners of society. As we delve deeper into the grim world of serial killers, remember these early beginnings. They serve as a chilling reminder of the enduring presence of evil in our world. But when did we start calling these criminals serial killers? The term serial killer wasn't widely recognized until the mid-70s. The man behind its popularization? Former FBI agent Robert Ressler. Ressler was instrumental in the development of criminal profiling, a technique still utilized today to predict the characteristics and behaviors of unknown offenders. He coined the term to describe those who commit a series of murders over a period of time, usually with a pattern or characteristic that links the killings. This was a revolutionary shift in understanding these horrific crimes. It was no longer about isolated incidents, but about connecting the dots to reveal a bigger, more terrifying picture. Serial killers were not random anomalies, but a recurring phenomenon with identifiable patterns. This new understanding of serial killers allowed law enforcement to predict and hopefully prevent future crimes. So, the term serial killer isn't just a label, it's a crucial tool in the ongoing battle against these perpetrators of the unthinkable. Over the years, the world has seen some truly chilling serial killers. Let's delve into the infamous cases that have sent shivers down our spines and forever marked our history with their dark shadows. We begin in the foggy streets of London in the late 19th century where a figure known as Jack the Ripper lurked in the shadows. His victims were mostly women living in dire poverty, their lives brutally cut short. Despite the best efforts of the police, Jack the Ripper was never identified. His identity remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in the annals of crime. Across the pond in the United States, the mid-20th century saw the rise of Ted Bundy. A seemingly charming and intelligent man, Bundy was a master of deception. He used his charisma to lure his victims only to reveal a monstrous side that left at least 30 women dead. His trial captivated the nation, and his execution marked the end of a reign of terror that had spanned over four years. Fast forward to the late 70s and we meet Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal. Dahmer's crimes were particularly gruesome, involving murder, necrophilia, and cannibalism. His chilling confession and the horrifying details of his crimes revealed a deeply disturbed individual who had been able to hide his dark secrets for years. In the realm of female serial killers, Aileen Warnos stands out. A former sex worker, Warno shot and killed seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990, claiming that they had either raped or attempted to rape her. Her story has been the subject of numerous films and documentaries, shedding light on the complexities of her tragic life. Lastly, we turn to the Zodiac Killer, who terrorized Northern California in the late 60s and early 70s. Known for his cryptic letters and ciphers sent to the press, the Zodiac Killer claimed to have murdered 37 people, 
although only five deaths have been definitively linked to him. Despite extensive investigations, the Zodiac Killer's identity remains unknown, his case still open and unsolved. Each of these killers left a lasting impact on society, forever changing our understanding of human nature. Their stories serve as a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface, hidden behind the masks of ordinary people. As we continue to study their cases, we strive not only to solve the mysteries they left behind, but also to prevent such horrifying crimes from happening in the future. The face of the serial killer has evolved over the centuries. As our society has marched into the modern era, so too have the criminals that live within it. The methods of the past have been replaced with new, chilling adaptations that utilize the technology of the present day. Consider the case of the Golden State Killer, a man who terrorized California for over a decade, starting in the mid-70s. His crimes were not only horrifying, but also marked by an eerie understanding of the modern world. He used a combination of stealth, intelligence, and an uncanny ability to stay one step ahead of the law. But technology would eventually play a pivotal role in his capture. In 2018, after over 40 years of mystery and fear, the Golden State Killer was finally identified and arrested. This breakthrough came not from a traditional tip or breakthrough in the case, but from the science of genetic genealogy. Investigators used DNA evidence from crime scenes and cross-referenced it with genetic profiles available on public genealogy websites. This innovative approach ultimately led them to their suspect, a former police officer named Joseph James D'Angelo. Similarly, the elusive Long Island serial killer who is believed to have murdered at least 10 people over a period of nearly two decades has remained a mystery. Despite the use of advanced technology and extensive manhunts, the killer's identity remains unknown. These cases serve as stark reminders of the duality of modern technology. While it provides us with powerful tools to catch these predators, it also offers new avenues for their heinous acts. The internet, for instance, has given serial killers a new hunting ground where anonymity and deception are all too easy. But as the face of the serial killer evolves, so too does our understanding. We continue to learn, adapt, and refine our methods in the hope of preventing future atrocities. We may not yet have all the answers, but every step forward brings us closer to understanding the dark underbelly of our society. The evolution of the serial killer continues as does our fight to understand and stop them. The actions of these individuals have left an indelible mark on society. The shockwaves from their heinous acts extend far beyond their immediate victims, infiltrating every facet of our lives and culture. Just consider the victims' families. The grief they endure is unimaginable, a wound that time may never fully heal. Their lives are forever marked by a senseless act of violence, their loved ones reduced to headlines and statistics. It's a reminder of the human cost of these crimes, a cost that's all too often overlooked in the macabre fascination with the killers themselves. The influence of serial killers doesn't stop at the personal level. It permeates our media and pop culture. From the spine-chilling novels of Thomas Harris to the gripping television series like Mindhunter, our fascination with these individuals is undeniable. They've become the dark muses of storytellers, their twisted psyches providing a morbidly captivating source of inspiration. Yet this media portrayal is a double-edged sword. While it heightens awareness about these horrors, it also risks glamorizing the perpetrators, casting them as anti-heroes rather than the monsters they truly are. It's a delicate balance, one that we must constantly reassess to ensure we're not inadvertently feeding into the very darkness we aim to expose. The impact of serial killers has also led to significant changes in law enforcement practices. The rise of criminal profiling, for instance, was largely driven by the need to understand and predict the behavior of these killers. It's a testament to society's determination to learn from these tragedies, to turn horror into a catalyst for change. As we continue to delve into the minds of these killers, we strive to prevent future tragedies and remember those who have been lost. Their stories, their lives, and their legacies are the echoes that remind us of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of humanity. In honoring their memory, we reaffirm our commitment to justice, to understanding, and to the safeguard